Hello everybody and welcome to another episode of Mixed Mows and today's episode we're going to take a little look at a little job lot of lawnmowers I've got in, just a job lot of two. I've got a Hater 48 that came in, it's an old one with a, a rear roller and a million deck. Um, that one will be coming up quite soon, um, it needs some spare parts put on it and I've ordered the parts off of um, eBay so they should be here uh, momentarily. So that video will be coming up. But today's video is going to be about a little Ryobi lawnmower that came in as part of it and um, it all looks complete ish as in the engine and the deck is pretty good and uh, what have you but it's missing cables bits and pieces and also the gearbox has been taken apart underneath so the driver is is, is, is not effective drive doesn't work but i do actually have a spare roby if you remember from many moons back um i have a spare roby in my mower stall which i haven't touched just been neglected in the, in the mower stall and the drive used to work on that one and i was looking for a bag however since time has lapsed that roby uh, the deck has deteriorated and it does need a bit of a spray job but this deck is quite good so I think what I'm going to do is try and get this engine running first initially and then if the engine runs I should then take the back axle out of the Ryobi that's in the mower store and put it into this one and then one complete lawnmower that's the idea. If this is your first time in watching Mixed Mowers hit the old subscribe button and whack the old bell and set notifications to all that way you'll be told that one I've done a video or two that I've got on my weekly live stream on a Saturday night which starts at 6pm UK time. So without further ado, let's get down and dirty and let's check out this Ryobi lawnmower. Right, here's the Ryobi. Um, it's a Ryobi um, 140cc um, lawnmower. With, um, it's got drive, it's got all the, all the stuff. It's missing the cables, bits and pieces. As you can see, the dead man's cable has been snapped to spare. Um, I don't know about the drive cable that's missing as well, so it's got some bits to do on it, which is uh, no, no biggie for me, that's all doable. I've taken out the spark plug already. This had a um, an F7 RTC LG plug in it. That's, that's come out already, and I've um, put in a nice new um, NGK spark plug. So what I'm going to do is, because a dead man's cable is snapped, I'm going to just going to tie this back with a cable tie and then we'll try and fire it up and see if it at least starts. Right, let me get a pair of snips, just, just in case we have a problem with this machine, I can cut, stop the engine if need be. Right, it's got some juice in it, I'll put some juice in there. There's not a lot. Just enough just to wet its whistle. I've got a pair of snips as well. Let's give it some prime. It says three, but we give it five. Dead man's hand was not working as well as it should do. That one's looking at. But it runs, a bit smoky. It's got a little bit of a knock to it, but uh, I dare say it wants an oil change of bits and pieces anyway. I'm going to check the crankshaft as well to make sure there's nothing gone wrong with that. And then uh, we, can, we can go from there. So first thing I'm going to do is remove the HT lead off of the engine. I'll tip up on its side. I just want to double check see if the crank is bent or not. That's it. Let's just make sure you're in shot. Let's bring it forward a touch. 
to that there. Just want to double check this crankshaft is not bent. No, it looks good. It's the same distance on either side. Yeah, it is. It's good. So that's all good. But as you can see underneath here, someone's been in and they've had the, uh, the gearbox apart. There's all bits and pieces up in there. So the gearbox is no good. Um, it's got the tension of spring to there as well, which is good. So we get this one in and I'll take the gearbox off and then um, let's have a quick look at the donor one I've got in the other shed in the mower store. Let me tip this back on its wheels again. Ooh, I'm sure there's eggs is eggs. I've got one in your mower store. Let's have a look. Yeah, there she is. I knew I had one. And as you can see, this one, the deck's not rotten. So it's just got a lot of surface rust, so that needs a respray. But that, that's a good uh, good little lawnmower, but I'm using bits and pieces of it. The, the axle's going to come off off the back. Exactly the same lawnmower um, as the other one, which is cool. So it's less work to actually uh, take the axle off and respray the whole deck. And all the cables, they all work as they should. So I need those for donor parts as well. Um, so I'll be dragging this one out and uh, this will be used as a donor machine. Okay, here's a Ryobi. Uh, this is the one that I've, I've got in. So the crank is good, which is fantastic news. Um, it has got a bit of a knock, but th these I think are just so mass produced. They're not exactly the highest quality materials to man. So um, it, it just sounds a bit tinny is what I'm trying to say. Um, so I'm not overly concerned. By the time we get a decent oil change on it and what have you, that'll all be good. One thing I want to do is that these are renowned for spilling fuel when they uh, are tipped up. So I'm going to clamp the fuel off so that no more fuel can come out of this tank. There's not a lot in there anyway, but uh, just a bit. So what first I'm going to do is tip it up on its side, all the way over to about there, for that, for that to stay. I think it will. And we're going to start to have a little look at this um, back axle on this lawnmower. So let me spin you around and uh, I'll see you in two ticks. So I think you're going to get a better view from where you were actually, just a bit closer. So the first thing I want to do is remove the wheels. And uh, these are just wheel trims on here. They just pop off pretty much. Screwdriver underneath and pop them off. One on both sides. And there should be about a 13 mil um, nut that holds them on. So let me just grab my Dewalt bar. And I'm taking that off because I think I might be able to get away actually. Do you know what? We've actually just undoing these nuts here. One, two, one here, one here, one here, one here. That may release the entire axle um, rather than mucking about with removing the wheels. But we shall see. Let's see if we're going to be a 12 or 13. It might be less than that. I'll try a 10. A 10 does look a bit a bit big. No, it's a 10. And it's got a nut on the back. So these are going to be no easy, no easy fix to get these off. But it looks well rusted. Let me see if I can get a 10 mil behind there. Cool. That's going to be a bit awkward. get something up behind there. It's gonna be a bit fiddly fiddly. I can't get a can't get a ring end on it I don't think. No the ring end's too tight over. Might be a pair of mole grips job. But I've got four of these to do so I'll try and get a move on. Uh, it 
might be a pair of mole grips. About the bottom ones. Oh, do you know what? I don't. I, do you know, I think they're just like a gutter bolt. In which case, that'd be on eleven. have a little look at this because that actually looks more like a gutter bolt to me so it could just be like an 11 mil here we are I like a little tiny square 11 mil bolt this is going to be annoying no washer so let me get these four undone. Now a few notes to make. Let me bring a bit closer and bring you in here. So this, there's a little tiny spring just here. Let me show you. A little tiny spring. Okay, this is a gearbox tensioner spring. And there's a little tiny eyelet just there. Okay. Now that little tiny spring has to hook with the longer, the longer lead of the two. It goes through and back on itself and that's got to sit like that so that when you um put on the gearbox which i'll show you later uh, that tensions your gearbox okay now i have got a, a belt in here um which can go on that'll be fitted last i'm gonna take the blade off to sharpen the blade and what have you anyway so that'll be fitted last so the, i have also removed the cables from the um from the machine as well they've been done off of a donor and on these robies the red cable, let me bring it back a smidge. The red cable is the um, is the one that goes onto a drive. Okay, so you've got a dead man and uh, a drive cable, and this red one with a grommet on is the one that goes onto a drive. So we want to loosely thread that through, and that's already got a grommet on it, so I may have to pull a grommet out to get it fit. We should see. Uh, it will go, I think, with a little bit of therapy. Yeah, loosely fit that because we want to fit that to the gearbox before we install the gearbox, if that makes any sense. So I've got me my gearbox here, which I'm going to blow off with a compressor because it's just a little bit, little bit dirty. Um, so I'll blow it off now, and then when you come back, we'll uh, start to fit this gearbox in. Okie doke, so we're back. Right, now the gearbox, they are quite simple to fit, so don't ever be sort of put off by trying to fit them. Um, what I want to do before I do anything is that there's a little tiny tab here which has got bent when I uh, try to remove this, this gearbox last time off here. I did it first time round. That little tiny tab is bent now. Hopefully that's not going to snap. If it snaps, I've had it. Or oh, we've had it. Because we are, we are a team, right? Let me try and just bend that up. That's not going to move for now. I'll get around that in a bit. But that needs to be uh, put back into shape. Some are telling me it'd be easier to do it now, but I'll, I'll check. It may not It may not have to be bent yet. We'll see. We'll see what happens. So the gearbox itself, I'm waffling. This cable needs to fit into this hole here and then attach onto this arm here. So bring the cable through, plenty of slack, and now's the time to do it. Okay, so what I would recommend is you put the tab on first into its little tiny home, which is there, okay? And then pull this cable back and fit it into its housing and feed the cable back in, okay? You might have to pull it from the other end. But, uh, that's how it's got to go. It's got to go in there first. If you don't do that first, then, then you, you, you're, gonna make, you're making life hard for yourself. Let me just get hold of that gear cable. Give it a pull just to get rid of some of that tension. That's it. Good. <clears throat> Otherwise, you're, you're just gonna really, really make life hard for yourselves. So now we can start to fit this gearbox in. And here is the hole. Remember I talked about that spring? The hole sits on this little tiny tab just here. There's a small tab, a small hole. Can you see that? Just there, that spring, you put down a pair of pliers. I'll show you later on, but it fits in that little tiny hole just there, okay? So we'll uh, try and now fit this gearbox in place. 
best we can. <coughs> best we can. It's a bit fiddly, so just take your time with it. Because you've got the height adjustment, which, which is going to be, be fighting you all the way. I can guarantee you that. That's got to sit up into there, like so. And then the height adjustment, which is sat underneath the machine. So let's get that one in place first. I'm happy with that one. That gearbox has got to go round a bit before it go up, like so. That's it. I'd like to get that, that bottom side in, but it's caught up somewhere. I might go back on, onto its bum, but I don't really want to put much more tips over much more than what I have to. I've got to drain it about out of all anyway. There it goes. It's roughly in place. That's got to sit up a touch. Let me get a pry bar on that because the gearbox has slipped as well. That's it. Let me get a pry bar in there just to try and maneuver it into position. The bottom one's come out. So let's fit that one in there first. Right, the next thing to do is to get the uh, pull cord, uh, put the, um, the spring on, the tensioner spring. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put a little tiny loop on the end of that. Just so um, it holds when I do the tension on the spring. Put that on the end of the spring. Bring that up round. There's a little tiny hole. Uh, where is it? Just down here. That's where it's got to go. So I've got to pull this back. And that's quite got some tension. Let me move you guys round. So you can see what I'm doing, and not, you're not in my way. Let's put you down here, and hopefully you'll see this. If it don't all come off and just bite me in the chops, oh, that spring's got a hell of a travel. Let's try and minimise it by bringing that back. Select the height adjustment up to the highest level, and that way you get you got less travel to put on it. And there's a hole where it is there. That's going to come back and sit in the hole just there. So I'm happy with that. We've now got a bit of tension back on the height control. Sometimes they can be absolute pickles to do those. So I can now snip that bit of pull cord. And that's why I always keep spare bits of pull cord about, just for such jobs. So that's now all on. We can now fit the little tiny plastic cover, which is down by the old tripod. So now we can fit the plastic cover, which goes onto the, the mower. Uh, it's gonna go that way. Onto there, onto there, onto there. So that sits on there. And we want, um, let's get this right. Always get this wrong. Where's my gear cog gone? There it is. Gear cog and circlip and pin. Pin goes in first like so and then make sure you're getting all this guys because uh, you'll be asking questions later on so how do you do that mate and then the gear cog um this end with the, with the um the grooves in it that's what that's what activates your, your drive that goes in there okay so you can't put it backwards but it goes forwards okay and then we've got a circlip to go on on there as well a little flat ended driver would be good Oh, stuck behind my magnet. That's it. A little circlip and just try and bounce that on first go would be good. These can be pickles. Man's gets to get a little bit of therapy with a hammer. It's a ball paint. That's a bit big for the job, but it'll do it. On there like that. That's starting to go. There it goes. That's on. So that's on. That's where it needs to be. Happy with that. That all sits on there. And we want the wheel, which has got a bearing on it on the inside. Make sure that bearing is nice and loose, which it is. That then sits up onto there locks onto there. 
Then we've got a 13 mil um, nut that goes onto there. I think it's 13, 13 or 12, one or the other. Can't quite remember off the top of my head. What we've got there, that's a, uh, that's a 12. Yeah, 12. That goes on. We'll cover on. And that's the gearbox side of it done. Still got to do the um, the belt, yeah. I'll come back to that a bit later on. Um, got um, this to do now, because someone's been in here. This is all broken as well. So that can all come off. I'm trapped up here somewhere. I've got to remove a dead man's handle uh, cable off the of, off tother end. Let me just do that quickly. That's it. That give me a bit of slack. Now there's a bit missing here. I've got a donor part off the other machine, as I say. So that's all good. Let's remove that. Yeah, someone's been in here. That bit's missing. But we've got a spare of those. That comes off. Now keep all these because uh, that's still actually a good cable. Okay, so don't go throwing them out. Keep them. Um, and now I can bring up my donor cables, which are exactly the same as what come off the other machine. nut and bolt we put on there. Should be that one. I think it goes in there. That sits in there. A little tiny nut goes onto that. And we'll whip that up. That's only a 10 mil. This is the reason why I said yes I'll take this mower because I knew I had all the spare parts for it. Well possibly. Oh, here comes my Riley boy. Yeah! Yeah! What? Cool! All right, not too tight of those, because you'll break those. And if I break that set, I don't have a spare. Uh, just make sure you've got the right cable. Dead man at the top. Oh, phone's buzzing. And drive one down the bottom. May have to take that drive off of there to fit that. Sometimes you do. That's it. Fill that back together. Fiddly fiddly. Goes into there, and then that one then goes up onto there. Oh, that's got all the way around. That's because it's not connected to the other end. You pull that cable out attached just to. Take the stack off it. So that, that's a dead man and the drive, and the drive now works. Let's just test it on the machine, try and pull the machine backwards. So it rolls on its own with no drive, and then connect the drive and locks. So that's working. So super happy with that. Um, before I connect the bits up to that, I want to connect my dead man's hand on the other end. You know how to do those onto a switch at the front. Pull it back and hook that up. That's, that's, no, that's no biggie. There's not a lot of throw in that. That cable's stretched, something wicked. So I may have to come back to that and put a join in there. There's not a lot of throw there, but we shall see when we go to start it. I might take the cover off and inspect the cover to make sure that the cover is actually, um, the switch is actually doing what it should be doing. There's not a lot of throw on there. And that doesn't go any higher. I don't think I can put this down any further because it'll affect the drive. No, can't. So yeah, that's got to be uh, that's got to have a, a snip and join. We'll do it now. While I'm mucking about. There's way too much slack in that cable. Let's come right down here with it. Let's cut that there. Let me get um, one of my connectors. And all we're going to do is fit that into there fit that into there, take the slack up to about there, and then just want to get a pair of grips, and initially just crush that just there, just so I know roughly where it goes, and then I'm going to put that in the vise, so I'm going to take that back off, and then crush that in the vise. Okay, that's now been crushed in the old vise, 
just how it should be. And I've had some of my subscribers say to me that they've tried doing that and it keeps slipping. Um, it shouldn't do, number one. If you crush it, you know, properly, if you, if you really do crush it, I find it works better. Um, if you don't do it, um, if you don't crush it as successfully as you should do, then it's never gonna work. So yeah, make sure that you fully crush that um, as much as you can. And grab a 10 mil nut. It doesn't matter which way around this goes. Uh, Sorry guys. On there. So now with that cable now modified, I'm now look watching down the bottom end for a swing on that cable. And that's now got full travel. And as you see that cable is now not not um not moving. So yeah, my advice to you guys is who's who's using that little hack is to um fully crush that completely flat in a vice, seems to work really, really well. Um, the drive ones are particularly hard, they take up more tension. But, um, I want to snip that other cable like an bit. Oh, yeah. um, and uh, they tend, to, uh, tend to, to, to pull out to a degree, but if you crush them in a vice, then you'll find that it doesn't. Right, I've got the, uh, the donor part off of the other mower. That sits up into there clips onto there and then just free self tapping screws will hold that into place. Flip screwdriver. And these are the original screws. One up in there somewhere. Oop. Put that in there first. That might help. Goes up into there somewhere. Slide down for your benefit. Do that one. And there's two or three to do. So I'll do those now and I'll come back once they're all screwed up. Right, let's remove this blade. I'm about to get my big gun out. Uh, what I say it was about 16, didn't I? Is that 16? Yeah, 16. Put that on there. Uh, what are we on? Full or reverse? Uh, reverse. on that yeah my dewalt has been not struggling but not doing as well as it used to but you know it can't be getting that old because uh, I've not had it that long the whole boss is going to come off I'll try and remove that blade if I can that's got to be sharpened there goes that and then we've got a belt up in here that's the kind of check condition of that I don't, I don't know very bad it's in a lot worse no, the belt's alright. Just dirt. So that's okay. Uh, is there a keyway in there? Keyway's built in, into the boss. I'm going to try and remove this, this belt cover now as well. There's a 10 mil in there. It's a little nylon locking nut. Hello, Mrs. P. Say hi, Mrs. P. Hi. <laughs> One in there. I think that's it. And the belt cover can then come off. Washer there. Washer there. I'm not sure if there's anything else holds these up. On here. It doesn't appear to be anything else. It's like, it's like they're locked in with two tabs or something. I don't want to break it. I've got a spare I suppose, but I'm not in the habit of breaking stuff. There it goes. Bit of dirt in there. Don't go in the bin. Um, and now I can fit the belt on, put the boss back on. Seals good underneath. Uh, 
keyways there. That goes on there. And then we can bring the belt onto the back pulley. That's no biggie now to do that. And then start to bring that gearbox up to where it needs to be. Don't forget the HT lead is off on this machine. It might be best if I can do it that way. That's it. And then I can try and fish it onto the uh, boss. As long as it grabs a keyway. Pull the belt over. Mind your fingies when you're doing this. There it goes. That's not a split, it's just a bit of dirt. Push the boss up. That's now all on. And now refit the um what's that there? What's that? It looks like plastic, but I might be wrong. It's lovely to know it's burnt. That then now slides up. There's two slots that these fit into, one either side. So make sure they go in, and then the bottom tab sits underneath. There's a bit of a movement job going on. There's one. I'll try and locate the other. Oh, dog next door, and they yodel. goes on there together over the boss like that and that's it and that's how you fit the blade bosses on them and the belt covers so I want two washers oh you know right old yodel today you're not very happy another washer here somewhere I'll try and find it if not I've got spare washers that's probably amongst all the dirt here let me find a spare washer for it and I'll... Uh... Oh, it's on there. I'm trying to hunt around for stuff and it's already on there. It's waiting to be put on. So that goes on. 10 mil does that up. That's on. Uh, it's like the old blade. Well, not too shabby. I've seen a lot worse. Was a bit. Was a bit of a grind. We'll give it. We'll give it a bit of a birthday. Just don't double check the uh, angles of it. Make sure it looks. It looks uh, pretty good. Make sure it's not been hit. I don't think it has. So that's good. Um, I'll give it a sharpen. I'll come back when I've done that, and um, the mower be back on its wheels then. Okay. Blades all sharpened and balanced, and uh, I've now got a spare blade for one of these bees as well, which is cool. Lots of spare parts. Let's uh, put it out of the way. I'll take you all out. Um, that's got to come out. I might, have to, I might have to empty out my old container. It's uh, a little bit full. Um, there's more than that in there. I know there is. There you go. Oh. Maybe not then. Let me get it tipped up. Because... Uh, it's all got to come out, and I think there is more than that in there. Let me tip her up. That should go, maybe go, that should go a bit lower in there. There's all in there, I know there is. Um, I'll take you all out, and um, refill it, come back, and when we come back, I'll be out in the garden with it, and we'll give it a test run, uh, fill up with petrol and whatever, see how we got on. Right, here it is. Don't forget, I still might have to investigate the dead man's handle yet because it wasn't quite cutting out when it was running earlier on. So I might have to revisit that. No petrol in here now, it's empty. So let's give it a bit of a drink. Plenty of juice. Give that a minute just to run down to the carburetor and want to check for leaks before I fire it up. Get the petrol out of the way. And let's see what happens. It was smoking earlier on, so it will need a good run. But we shall see. Oh. 
full cord up where it belongs. Carburetor off to be cleaned. It is leaking to a degree, but it should be safe to start. Sort out the uh, dead man's handle, and I've got a bit of fuel leak as well. I think that's all. That's all combined. Why it's not running as well as it should. Let me get a set of forceps. We don't like fuel leaks. So let's stop that. So I'm going to go back on the bench again. I'm going to take the pull cord assembly off. Check out why this isn't cutting out as it should be. And uh, quick look at the carburetor. I think the carburetor made a bit of a clean. It's got a bit of a leak coming out of the primer, so that tells me the carburetor is dirty, but uh, I'll have a little look. Okay, so that will do for this little lawnmower for part one. I'm going to do a part two on it. Um, I was a video be too long, so look out for part two. Um, but this, this lawnmower is running to a fashion. It's a bit smoky, admittedly. Um, it's got a bit of a fuel leak, and the dead man's handle switch is not cutting the engine out, and it needs to before it can sell. So I need to have a look at that, see what's going on with that. If you enjoyed this video of Mixed Mars, don't forget to hit the old subscribe button, whack the old bell, give it a thumbs up and leave any comments you got down below. Um, it shows the appreciation of the channel and helps my channel's growth. Um, I look forward to seeing the next episode of Mixed Mars very, very soon. But until then, people, don't forget, more importantly, take it easy.